Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to undertake an alteration of speed on a manual radar plot. So first off we need to establish our starting parameters. We're going to say it's a 12 minute plot on a 12 mile range. We can then complete the scale bar down the bottom here and label up from 0 to 12 miles, 12 miles of course corresponding with the distance from the centre of the plot to the outer edge of the ring. Our own vessel we're going to be going due north at 20 knots. I've chosen 000 just because it makes the numbers that little bit easier. 20 knots of course means 20 nautical miles in one hour. So how many miles in 12 minutes because that's the time of our plot. We can divide down by 5 to find we cover 4 miles in 12 minutes. This gives us the length of our vector. We can place on our own vector, of course pointing due north corresponding with our course and the length of it corresponding with 4 miles which indicates our speed. We're then ready to start receiving returns. When we get the first return, all we've got is a range and bearing, we can't tell anything else from that at this stage. Six minutes later we get the second return. Of course we still can't tell much from this, we've got quite scanty information on the screen, we can't do anything with it yet. Then six minutes after that second plot, or 12 minutes after the initial plot, we've then got three plots in a line. This gives us good information and we can continue to complete the plot. Now I'm going to be completing the plot quite quickly in this video. If you want to see it in a bit more detail, I'll link up in the top so you can go back to a previous video where I'll walk you through the steps a little bit slower. So the first thing to put on is our relative line of approach. This tells us the CPA is not going to be zero. There's going to be a slight CPA because there's a difference between the center of the ring and that line. We can measure the radius of the circle that we've put on to determine the CPA, which in this case is 0.4 of a mile. We can then add another line perpendicular to the relative line of approach to give us the bearing at the CPA, which in this case is 009 degrees. Next thing, we need the time to the closest point of approach. Now we want to measure how far the dots have travelled in 12 minutes. And we can see they covered 3.8 miles relative in 12 minutes. And they've still got 6 miles to go. Now that 3.8 relates to 6 in the same way 12 relates to the time to the closest point of approach. We can complete a little bit of algebra to work out the TCPA which is going to be 18.9 minutes. Next we need to label up the diagram and complete the plot. First off O which is the original position, the first position when we first got the return. A which is the actual position of the vessel, that's the position the vessel is in at the time we're completing the plot. Then we can move our own vector. We know our vector is the way of own vessel, so we know it's going to point towards the O and the other end of it is going to become W way of own. And then we can finally join up the W and A together to find the way of another vessel. And this vector contains information about the target vessel's course and speed. We can transpose it into the centre and read straight off to get their course as 048 degrees. We can then measure their length and use that to work out their speed. We can see the length of the vector is 5 miles according to our scale. We know they've done that in 12 minutes. So we simply multiply up by 5 to find they cover 25 miles in 60 minutes, which gives us a speed of 25 knots. The final thing to work out is the other vessel's aspect. And from that we imagine the plot as a relative plot with true vectors. If we're sat on the other vessel we can take a bearing of our own vessel and that comes out about 102 degrees and we compare that to our own heading and work out the difference. So in this case 102 minus our heading of 048 which is going to give us 54 degrees. We're on their starboard side which is their green side so the aspect is going to be green 54 degrees. Now we're going to want to take action. That CPA is not going to be enough. If I tell you the other vessel is a sailing vessel and we are power driven then rule 18 basically just tells us to keep out of their way so we're free to reduce speed if we want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my speed to 10 knots. I've made a bold alteration of speed. I've halved my initial speed. What on this diagram is going to change? Well everything corresponding to my own vessel's course and speed is going to change 
and the relative line of approach is going to change. So we can dim out the things that are going to change. You can see that the way of another vessel has remained the same. The other vessel's vector is going to be unchanged and the previous dots are also going to still be there because that's historical information. The vessel was there in the past. We can plot on our new vector. We're still going 0, 0, 0, but we're now at 10 knots, so that's half the length that it was before. Our vector is still going to correspond to the way of our own vessel. So we can put it down starting at point W, and instead of becoming way of own, it's going to become way of O prime, which is the new imaginary position. We can plot a line from O prime to A to get a new relative line of approach. If that speed alteration was instantaneous, the other vessel's return would start moving down that new relative line of approach. But I'm going to make this one a little different. We're going to say it takes 6 minutes to reduce speed to 10 knots. This isn't just the speed reduction, this is us thinking about what we want to do and then pulling back on the sticks and letting the vessel's speed run off. Now during that 6 minutes, nothing has actually changed. The vessel's going to continue down her previous line of approach. So we're going to get a new imaginary position in 6 minutes time. She's going to be here. We know the distance that she's travelled because the previous dots are all 6 minutes apart, so we can just project that into the future. If it wasn't 6 minutes, you could just work out and do a ratio between the two to get the new position of the vessel. After that, she's then going to follow down this new relative line of approach. So we can transpose this line of approach onto the new future position. And these two together will give us the new projected line of approach relative to our own vessel. With this information we can measure the new CPA. We're just going to draw a ring out the centre again and measure the radius of that ring which comes out at 2.2 miles. Our new CPA is 2.2 miles. Then we want our new time to the closest point of approach. Now this is a multi-step process again. First off we've got to get the baseline figure which is the distance from O prime to A which in this case is 4 miles. We know that that has been covered in 12 minutes. We also know from A to the new position has taken 6 minutes, so we've got the length of that leg. Then we want to measure the distance from that new position to the CPA, which actually comes out at 4 miles again, which we've already said is 12 minutes. If that wasn't exactly 4 miles, we'd just do a little bit of algebra and work out exactly how long that would take. From that we can work out the new time to the closest point of approach, which is 6 minutes, the difference between the dots, plus 12 minutes, the difference from the new dot to the new CPA, which comes out as 18 minutes. Our new TCPA is 18 minutes. If you imagine we were conducting a trial manoeuvre on an actual radar set, the new relative line of approach would run from A to this new position and then all the way up following the new relative line of approach. You can see that this black line actually represents the path that we expect those points to take if we alter our speed with a delay of six minutes. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you found the information useful. If you have, thumbs up is always appreciated. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And to stay up to date with all my latest published videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.